All right, today we have the Shox OpenCom UC. These are bone conduction headphones with the microphone, but more importantly, it has a USB adapter. You can get it with the USB-C or USB-A. It's odd they don't just sell the adapter in the box, but we order you to choose either A or C. I just chose A because I have a bunch of USB-A to C adapters, and I'm gonna be using it with a desktop computer anyhow. I've actually never used the actual Shox brand. I had a couple other you know, off-brand ones I tried, and they were okay, but this is the real deal. I think like the main major player in the bone conducting market. Boom! So everything's in a case. Got ourselves a little user guide and some safety instructions. So mostly paperwork you're not going to deal with. We'll keep the user guide out for a second. So that's a part of why I chose these is I do like things that come in their own little pouch. This seems to be a nice one. It's kind of hard shell there. Inside the pouch, we have just a little card with your serial number on it to help you register the product. In here is the charging cable. So I like and don't like this. It is proprietary, of course, but it is a magnetic charger, so it just kind of clamps on there, which I do like that. But of course, if you have a problem, you'll have to buy a new one. Here's the actual headphones themselves. So I have a big hand, but these are smaller than I thought they would be. And I do like how the case is kind of contoured to allow them, and that's soft but hard at the same point, like it's a fabric thing but it's, it's kind of like a foam shell essentially and then it will hold your USB guy there and the USB does have like a little button on the back that depress it. So basically these guys go over your ear this kind of just sits on your temple essentially. On the back of the right side is where the wireless charger is. It's magnetized essentially. I would thought it'd go like this but it doesn't. It goes like this. It only lets you go one way apparently. Fucking magnets. How do they work? And so it's a good magnet, right? It'll hold it. And then over here we have a plus and minus button. That's your volume. A little blue light there. NFC logo on the other side. And here's the microphone. There's not a detent. It just kind of slides around. I thought it would snap into places, but it doesn't. It just kind of slides. No, it can't go full 3D. It only goes down 360. It, can't, it only stops. It stops here, but you can take it back all the way here. So yeah, it can't do a full 360. It snaps back into place. It doesn't really, you can't really bend it. We can bend it so it doesn't break, but it doesn't like, it's not a wire that sticks. Like I can't stick it out here and it stays. It'll snap back. There's like a little mesh grill in the front there. And there's like a little mesh part right there as well. You know, in here there's not speakers, right? I mean, that's that's where the audio comes from, but it's not really a speaker per se. And so the same side with the buttons has this multi-function button here. All right, yeah, there are some guides here, right? So first I'm gonna pair it with my mobile device, which is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold. So you wanna turn on the headset, uh, press and hold the volume plus button for a couple seconds and the LED flashes blue. So we're gonna hold it down. So now should be on i think one two three that red powers off so let's do one two three again and now it's blue it turns on green for a second then blue so i'm gonna put it on my head hey big head so it's on and now i just need to open the bluetooth on my device so let's go to my bluetooth and we're looking for bluetooth devices i got a lot of course all right so what i'm gonna do now is scan in my ear i'm still not hearing anything so it's powered off let me turn it back on again all right it says welcome to shocks we can turn it on now let me scan it shows the number seven wonder if maybe the batteries did okay you gotta hold it down more all right it says pairing in my ear now the direction suck is all there is to it there we go now it shows open combat shock all right okay so now it says it's connected there's no app or anything now let me play a song. It really doesn't sound bad. When you press the volume up on the headset, it goes up here. So that's as loud as it is. It really doesn't sound bad. Not a lot of bass or anything, of course, but so I'm gonna hold this next to the ear and see if you can hear it. I think you can, yeah. Well, I don't hear it right now. It's interesting. But if I put my ear next to it, I can hear it. Here, you can definitely hear it. So it's not, I mean, it's bone conducting, but it still makes some kind of noise. So you can see my phone's playing if I hit that. It does pause it. Video thing's still playing, but you can see the play pause quit. And this does. So that's pretty good. It's very comfortable. I mean, I just put them on, but the goal really is to see if I can wear these all day long, which I assume I could. I don't like that the microphone, like when it just goes up, it's going to be touching my hair. I wish you could detach the microphone and just use the microphone when you want it, but I don't think so. I can see the microphone microphone in my periphery. I don't love that. But I got to carry on a conversation and have music playing. It's perfectly fine. So if you do it one time, it should pause it. Do it again, it plays. Now if I do a double tap, it should go to the next song. All right, and now if I do three saps, it should go back. One, two, three, it doesn't seem to work. And that could be a Spotify thing, but I mean, I would never use that anyhow. That seems too confusing to me to remember how all these different headsets work. The pressing once for play and pause, I do like. Now, I don't know what it does when you're on a phone call. It says press once to answer the call and press once to end the call. I would prefer you can mute the call. Yeah. Let me tie it to my computer now. All right, so I am going to record installing this in my PC. I'm not gonna actually show you me plugging a USB port in. 
I'm just gonna show you what the screen shows and then see what I see on my end. So currently I still have the headphones on connected to my phone. I am now gonna plug the USB device in. You wouldn't notice anything. I am gonna unplug my wired headphones and I'm gonna plug in just this guy. So now I should be able to see it at least. There we go. Now it's bleeping. All right, my headphone just said device two connected. All right, so it does show us enough here. Aftershock loop 100. All right, so I'm just gonna watch my own video. I'm just gonna press the button. Okay, it pauses the video. Now I'm press play on my phone to see if it plays music. Oh, so it does. It doesn't play two things at the same time. It kind of turns the audio off on one and then plays the other. I don't uh, love the audio quality. Yes, yeah, so I'm used to using a DAC and having a much higher quality audio. So don't love this. Well, let me hear music on here. All right, I would say passable, but we'll see. Let me try them out tomorrow. All right, this is with me using the Aftershocks or Shox UC Pro. And now I'm gonna switch my audio to the Shure MB51. And so now we're using this one, holding it in my hand, of course, and further away, and then I'll put it on the desk. Uh, Tony sucks, oh, no. don't subscribe to Max.T, subscribe to 512. And now let me put it back here, and then I will once again change it back to the Shox gas. And now we'll once again say, uh, Tony sucks, don't subscribe to Mash IT. Grab the 5 out of 12. Now let's go to Logitech Brio. And now the audio should be coming from the Brio. Once again, Tony sucks. Don't subscribe to Mash IT. Subscribe to 5 out of 12. And then let's go back to the short MB51. I think probably sounds better than the road that I was testing with before. Physically larger. Tony sucks. Don't subscribe to Mash IT. I just listened to the other video I just made, and then I was surprised to hear that these kind of sound almost as good as the Rode, but this is the one I had for the longest time, so I wanted to see how this one goes. Let's check it out. And obviously, there's no question that this microphone sounds better than uh, the guys here, right? All right, thanks. So I don't like these. They're good. If your goal is comfort and exercise, I guess these are probably the way to go, but if you're not talking to anyone for a considerable amount of time, then these are probably the way to go. My money, my choice. I'm choosing this one. Anyhow, I'm going to return. This guy will be done with the Open Run Pros at this point, and then I may add some follow-up to this if I can think of some things. All right, both of them get the big thumbs up. I'm a big fan of both these products. At this point, it's just natural for me to put these on every day and it doesn't, I mean, I've been using them for over a month and it just feels normal walking here, turn them on, put them on, ready to go. My only like real complaint, no, not even a real complaint really. Like if you get too far out of the range, of course it will drop range. And then when it drops range, it beeps. And my coffee maker upstairs is just out of range and I drink a lot of coffee. So I'll be up there getting a new cup of coffee and it beeps in my ear that I'm out of range. And then I gotta like walk five feet back in or if I'm eating lunch at the kitchen table, that's really on the cusp. So sometimes I'll be eating lunch and it will disconnect and then reconnect and disconnect and reconnect, which is not cool. But if I move over, I know where to sit now, where it connects, but if I'm on the edge of the table where it disconnects, that can be annoying. But it is very nice to have these on. Zoom call ends, I walk upstairs, make a snack, sandwich, cup of coffee, whatever, and then I can just start playing music from my phone or a YouTube video from my phone and they switch seamlessly and that's pretty great. So big thumbs up. All right, thanks.